to answer Hvala. Thank you. And uh, I'm really excited and honored to be here as uh, I'm not an expert, what you would say, unlike most of you here. And uh, most of my, um, uh, so I don't have expertise, it's an experience. Just uh, being born and living in Yugoslavia gives me this expertise and uh, how one country that was propagating equality and brotherhood and unity through the means of propaganda, through the television, through the national television that was uh, actually based on a BBC model. And uh, when you say, now when you say populism, when you say um, propaganda, it's necessarily something bad. But at that time, as I was growing up as a kid, the national TV, which had only two programs, first and second, uh, was making lots of documentaries and uh, TV formats that were, in fact, yes, promoting, propagating uh, brotherhood and unity. When you think of it, uh, about it now, it wasn't a bad thing at all. And uh, through this period of time, of course, there were different uh, sides of this coin. And uh, dictatorship, authoritarianism of uh, communist party. And of course, none of the news, none of the media could go against the main idea of communist party. Although, when Tito uh, said historical no to Stalin in uh, 1948, um, some of the magazines, mainly dealing with culture and with uh, social subjects, were allowed to treat the subjects were, which were against the Communist Party uh, main ideas. That's why Yugoslavia was characterized as a soft communist country. Although this uh, mastodon of uh, TV station, national TV station, remained um, in that way until today. When we changed the system, when we became multi-party uh, system, right? Somehow the, the media stayed the same. So it wasn't that open, it wasn't now, we have more cable channels and so on. But um, unfortunately, again, we can see only one way propaganda, only the ruling party ideas. Now, even we don't have those magazines that can freely treat uh, subjects that are not according to uh, ruling party ideas, which is ironically called the progressive party. And it's really not. So when it comes to the terms with the uh, rhetorics, I really do believe that we need to re um, reinvent the terms. Progressive is not progressive, as the par ruling party in my country shows. Uh, when you say left, it's necessarily something bad. That's also the product of years and years of uh, left-wing uh, movements being sotonized. So it's easy to put a label on someone, uh, like we recently had an opportunity to see in uh, Hamburg during G20. There is, of course, a small group of anarchist and violent group, Black uh, Bloc, but in the narrative, when you put a sign equal between this one small group and you have extremists everywhere, of course, in every segment of the living. And when you look at the pictures of other left-wing uh, activists sitting on the grass and not being violent at all, probably not being capable of violence, um, in the mainstream media you will just hear and see the leftists being violent. Um, to, to, to come to the social media, from my point of view again, we, could, we wouldn't have uh, any alternative way of getting facts. 
<clears throat> without social media. So, um, for example, when I uh, joined DiEM, DiEM25, which is a pan-European movement for democratization of Europe, the uh, first pillar of uh, this movement was transparency. So that's what uh, drew my attention to it, because at the same time we had uh, going in Belgrade going on the project called Belgrade Waterfront, which is um, basically taking away part of our city, expropriating, uh, cancelling the law and constitution of uh, Serbia in favor of the project which is funded by, um, financed by Arab companies. We don't even know which companies, we don't know where they are uh, based or registered or anything. Um, so there is a movement, Don't Drown Belgrade, which started the protests and tried to put the light on this project, which is really not, uh, not useful for our city. And on the other hand, we wouldn't ever, never know about the movement or the protests are being organized without social media. My parents are older people, they watch news and they read newspapers, so if I wouldn't tell them that something is happening, they would never know. Or they will just have the spinned uh, picture that there was, for example, 200 people in the square and there was 10,000 people in, in the square. Um, also, what we are being told from the mainstream media, from the gover all of them governed by the ruling party, is that this is really a great thing for our country because it's uh, bringing the foreign investors, that's one of the mantras in my country, and it's bringing uh, the new working places, which when you look at the, the, the truth is Absolutely not true, because foreign companies are building the, the, this Belgrade waterfront and uh, working places are probably not going to be very nice working places, right? You can be a waiter or, uh, I don't know, mate in the hotel or in a fancy uh, shopping mall that's going to be there. So very, very important is the movement Don't Drown Belgrade, which DiEM25 in Serbia is collaborating with, trying to put the light on not only this issue, this is the biggest and most visible issue we had that all over. We have factories being sold and being uh, uh, presented like it's a good thing, like those are the new working places where uh, workers are employed and it's <laughs> rising our GDP, which in fact, again, is not true. Like we heard yesterday, it's a, a proletarian work and they're not employed if they're working for six months and that's it, or um, <clears throat> in a really, really poor, poor conditions and you will never hear about it. Even that uh, wages are lower, are lower than in China, and that uh, the workers are not allowed to have breaks for toilet and they're wearing diapers on their working places. So if the opposition, whoever thinks differently, says that, of course, if he's being, one is being sotonized and uh, called a traitor and uh, just being against the progress that our country is uh, now on, on the way of this uh, huge progress. Uh, coming here, I read that um, fake news was uh, pronounced the most uh, popular or mostly used word in last year, 80% more than years before. So it's also, I think, something that can be dangerous because when we accept in the narrative things like fake news or alternative facts, we are just uh, legitimizing something that is a lie. So nobody, I think that we should call things their real names. Um, 
I will finish here and maybe leave some more time for questions. Thank you.